All right, um, so today we're gonna be going over um, the basic installation process for installing a Power Beyond kit from John Deere. And this kit is used on many machines. I think it's, it's basically um, a kit that you can buy and it has everything in it that you will need to set up your Power Beyond. Now, the Power Beyond, um, a lot of people don't realize it, is an active hydraulic connection, and it's always active, meaning that when you take off the implement on the back of the machine, you need to put on the bypass hose um, to let the active pressure pass through that, that part of the valve. Um, if, if you don't do that, uh, when you turn the machine on, you can cause damage to the hydraulics in, in the motor and stuff like that. So keep that in mind, it's an active hydraulic connection. And the most popular use for this is for a backhoe. So you've got a machine, you just bought a backhoe and you want to connect the backhoe to the machine. Well, you're going to have to add um, the hydraulic power beyond connection to, to get that hydraulic um, power to the, to the backhoe itself. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I want to go through it. Installation time is about one hour um, from what I understand. You know, obviously, if you take your time, it's going to be longer, but um, I'm going to go through this and, uh, you know, this is, this is what you get out of the box. I just opened up the box. It has everything in there that I'm going to need. It has a decent set of instructions and uh, has all the fittings and connections that I'll need. Even comes with the hazard sign for the backhoe if you want to put it on there at the end. Um, so <clears throat> this machine still has all the three-point hitch arms on it. So my first job is going to be to take all this off. I'm going to strip this down and get rid of the, um, the arms in the center link. That way I can work on the back of the machine much easier. I may take off the inner fender and the tire, depending on how easy or not easy it is to get to that area of the machine. Um, but for now, this is, this is what it looks like when I'm starting. Um, and this is what I've got, you know, from, from out of the box from John Deere. Um, and again, this kit is pretty, pretty common popular kit with anybody who has a 3000, 4000, even other series, uh, newer series tractors. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to start this now and I'll be back. Okay. Um, we got the Power Beyond kit installed, fully installed, um, in about two hours. I think if you, if you were to figure an hour, um, to do the install of just the Power Beyond kit, once you're once you're fully disassembled, meaning your seat's out and you can actually get to that area where you have to connect uh, the two lines in, it's about an hour. So it's an hour to disassemble the machine to the point where you can actually start the install and then about an hour for the install. So about two hours total. Um, <clears throat> this kit is really, really uh, set up nicely. Uh, everything fits absolutely perfect. Um, clearances are all uh, perfect on the lines. The lines are all bent exactly right. So. Um, definitely well worth the money to buy uh, the John Deere uh, Power Beyond kit if you're gonna if you're thinking about doing it it's uh, it's definitely worth it um, this hazard uh, sign comes off it's just really there in case you uh, drive the machine um, you know on a public road uh, so so what, I'll, what I'm gonna do is take you through kind of how this works in in the parts that you, that I have to pay attention to um, to hopefully make the process really easy for you. There's a couple of tips and tricks I can share um, along the way that I learned. So <clears throat> the way this works is you have um, you have your supply, which is always active, and you have your return, which is only active when the bypass hose is in place, which is is in place right now. So again, when you're is an active line, so when you don't have an implement on this, you need to have that bypass hose in there so you don't damage your your motor your height your hydraulics and your um, your pump um, when you put the implement on for example a backhoe you're going to disconnect the bypass return and you're going to use the implements return which is over here um, and this will just simply hang with the cap put in place it'll hang while you have the implement on and you will pull this off and put the return of the implement there so so you're kind of creating a closed loop again, but you're, you're not using the bypass return when you do that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the two connections that you have to make are underneath here. It's still hard to see, let me get some light. I pulled the seat out and uh, took the back panel off the cab just to make it easier. Uh, that was the hour I was talking about to do all that. Uh, but there, there's two there's two connections you have to make when you're in here and I'm standing at the back of the machine, right? So 
Uh, this is the left side here, and so this is the one connection over here on the left, and on the right side, it's it's a little bit further down on the right there. I want to say it's a one inch, close to a one inch wrench, um, so that's it's a pretty good size fitting, and it's just two. There's two fittings you have to um, you have to undo, and then you take out the old uh, bypass line, which is just a straight hard line, and then you put in the, the two new connections that feed into. Uh, the new power beyond assembly, which is you know all these lines coming into the to this manifold So that is pretty much It from how you install it and it, it just kind of weaves into uh, The original location you get it around the wiring harness the same way the old one came off so you don't disturb the wires uh, You know you have a, a pipe fitting over here, which goes into um, the actual um, Hydraulic transmission area. This is this is the return when you're using the implement it just screws right into there the return line and then again on the left side you've got it you know into the same area where the factory one came off uh, really really easy uh, everything went on really super smooth so the only there's a couple things I wanted to point out though there's just two tips that I can give you one is around more of just getting the the seat assembly off um, the seat is easy but it's the um, the base which is which is the you know has the shock absorber base and that's a little tricky there's a little tip for that, but the, the tip around the power beyond is that there's this filter that goes um, back on the return and it only goes one way. And in the manual, in the instructions, it'll say, put the out, there's an out, uh, it says out on the end of the filter, put the out facing the hydraulic line. For me, well, what does that really mean? There, there's two hydraulic lines, one on the right, one on the left, so which one do you face it? But if you read the actual instructions a little further down, and I want to give you the page number so you can read it and then see it too. It's page eight. It's all around but replacing the rock shaft control valve filter. Um, it'll tell you that the the out on the filter should be facing line B. And of course, line B in the picture is this guy. So you can see that when you read it and when you stare at it long enough, you will you will realize it. But you don't have to do that because I've already given you the pointer. So page eight. Uh, line B and hence the filter is going to look just like that and it goes on either direction So it's not super obvious. The other pointer um, I can give you on this seat is That when you go to take the base seat comes off really easy There's four bolts the seats out it's on the floor, but the base is a little bit tricky on this on the on this, this model um, This is the 10 series the 4210 so it's got the nicer seat and you can't get the front bolts off the base unless you fully um, extend the height of the seat all the way up. So there's a little lever on the seat base, which is this guy here. Um, you pull that, you turn that out as high as you can until you get the seat as high as you can, the base of it up. And then only then can you get your socket on the, on the bolts. I'm gonna do a separate uh, video on taking just the seat out on this particular tractor just because it, it was kind of a pain. And, but once you, once you get that figured out, it's, it's really easy. There's four bolts. It's just the front two. There's not enough clearance with the seat unless you fully uh, extend it up all the way uh, from its resting position. So that is pretty much it on um, the Power Beyond uh, install. Again, super, super easy uh, to follow. That one thing with that return filter was the only thing that kind of kind of tripped me up a little bit because I had it on backwards and I had to, to reread it a few times and I put it on the right way. Um, again, I hope this helps you out and uh, that, was, that was pretty much it. Okay, so <clears throat> wanted to do just one more quick finish up on this uh, Power Beyond. This is actually done with the tractor, put all back together again and the Power Beyond in place and um, everything just fits like I said earlier absolutely perfect you, you couldn't you couldn't put together a kit that fit better um, if you tried and even with the with a cab on this this is um, a Curtis cab on this machine and and those cabs are actually uh, in my mind one of the best ones you can get even with the Curtis cab on there which is not a John Deere cab um, this kit fits absolutely perfect and um, the next step is going to be to get the, the backhoe mounted on this and I will be doing um, a video uh, in the near future on that and going over all the steps to, to mount it and, and get it all set up and um, hopefully uh, it will fit 
just right on here and uh, we'll be we'll be good to go okay hope this helps you guys out